In the last lesson, you learned about the var keyword. This helps us write cleaner, drier code. To use var effectively, it is important to understand literals and the types those literals create, as well as some other pieces of important information. Let's test your knowledge on those important pieces of information now. So these tests are definitely going to start increasing in difficulty and noticing the importance of paying attention to details. Let's begin. What is the default value of a string? Is it a blank string, void, or null? So this is the value that a string has if we don't assign a value to it. We simply declare a string variable. And the answer is null. Now I might not have explicitly stated this, but if you were paying attention to the code on screen when we were watching in the locals window, and I also mentioned that string is not a value type, these two hints suggest something different about string. String is a reference type, which we will come to in future lessons, and all reference types have a default value of null. The blank string is a valid value, but that isn't the default value. And void isn't a type, it's specifying if a method returns a value or not. So for those paying close attention to the lessons, they should have noticed at some point that a default value of string is actually null, and been inquisitive about what null means. This piece of information should have then stuck in your mind, and you would have remembered it for this test. So the next question, is true a literal? Simply yes or no. Now I have spoke about this, we have just done literals and I have mentioned the answer to this. You've got 10 seconds to think on this, I should hope everybody gets this one right. And the answer is of course yes. True is a literal for a boolean where you can have true or false. Next up is five inside single quotes a literal? Is it yes or no? And the answer is of course yes. A bonus if anybody knows the type that this literal is and it is a character literal. Now let's really start testing your knowledge. What type is minus six? Is it a float, an int, or an unsigned int? So this is the default literal value that is given when we type minus six. What type does that convert to? And the answer is, of course, an integer. A whole number with a minus with or without always converts to an integer unless it's cast. Next up, what type is 0m? Is it a decimal? Is this invalid code? Or is it a double? Again, I should hope you get this one right. This is a fairly easy question, if you were paying attention. And the answer is a decimal. Any value, numeric, whole or floating point, followed by an M, upper or lowercase, is a decimal. The lowercase and uppercase M is how we define a literal decimal. Next up, what does dry stand for? Is it don't repeat yourself, do not repeat yourself, or do repeat yourself? Again, attention to detail here, and a bit of obvious knowledge for the English language will help here. And the answer is both A and B. For those who are native English speakers, they will know don't and do not are the same thing, the first one being an abbreviation of the second. So it's important for those that are not native English speakers to perhaps know that don't and do not 
are the same thing and if you hear developers talking about something that don't and do not are the same word. Now, is byte b equals zero valid code? It's either yes or no. Think on this one and let me know your answer. And the answer is yes. Because we have explicitly specified the type byte and zero is a valid representation of byte, this will do an implicit conversion from an integer to a byte. So an implicit conversion is the opposite of casting, which is an explicit conversion. Implicit meaning implied. It's naturally implied by the statement itself. And explicit meaning that we have to explicitly state our intent. So when we cast to a short and we put the word short before the value, we are explicitly stating we want a short, hence the explicit casting. Implicit casting we're not stating that we want a byte on the right hand side of the statement. It is simply implied by the statement. That is what implicit and explicit mean. Is byte b equals 0b0 zero zero valid code? Is it yes or no? Hopefully you will get this one right given the last question. But again, you know my statements for trick questions, so think on this one and let me know. And the answer is yes. Again, the prefix for a byte is 0b, and that means the values coming after the 0b have to be only zeros or ones, and it's in the form of binary, not as an integer number. We will cover this more in future lessons, so don't worry too much about the values but do know that 0b defines that the value after is of binary representation. Second to last question, what type is var a equals 0b0? Zero zero? Is it a byte, an s byte, or an integer? And the answer is int. Now, how many of you, if any, got this? In the last lesson, I explicitly stated that var and a variable name equals 0b and then a value is a byte. Do you also remember me stating to never just believe what I say and to test and prove your assertions? This is the perfect way to show you the importance of not simply believing somebody teaching you code and that they are always right. Now I did this on purpose to prove a point, that even in a professional lesson teaching you professional code, to always test your assertions. Don't simply believe. Now 0b is a prefix to define a number in binary format. However, once you define the number, it is still an integer. So doing 0b and then 0101 for a binary number, it will convert the binary representation of those numbers into an integer. So this will actually give you an int value. And if anybody debugged their code and hovered over the variable or checked the locals window, you would have noticed this. So again, don't just follow the lesson and listen to me say things. Prove and test that I am right and what I have taught you is right. So hopefully this will stick in your mind and you won't make this mistake again. So the last question, how would we declare a byte using var? Would you do var b equals 0b0, zero zero, var b equals byte in brackets 0, or var b equals byte in brackets 0b0? Zero zero? And the answer here is the bottom two. The first one, as we've covered in the last question, simply returns an integer. The second one, var b equals byte zero, 
is called explicitly casting to a byte. So we are telling the compiler that we want the zero integer value to be of type byte. The third one is the same again. We are telling the compiler explicitly that we want the value on the right to be a byte. The only difference is the way we write the actual literal value is in binary format. So the first example we could write byte 10 and it would be an integer value 10 converted to a byte. The second one, if we wrote 0b10 to look like a 10, it would actually be the number 2 because 10 in binary is the number 2. So the way that we define the value is different, but both would give us a byte type. So this lesson was harder than most. There was a few trick questions and a very important lesson on never believing what you are told and to prove it yourself so you understand it deeper. The lessons will continue to increase in difficulty as we develop real world applications, but the knowledge is being given. And if you rewatch the lessons over and over, all the information you need to understand what is being taught is in front of you. If you struggle to understand things going forward, use the debugger, use your knowledge, and use the help available to you to understand what you need. Don't be afraid to ask questions, to write code, to run things. Don't be afraid to look stupid by asking questions you may feel are silly. The best way to understand things is to be open and frank about your knowledge and to ask the questions you need and to test the things you need to prove your knowledge. And as always, if you didn't score 100% in this test, which I'm guessing nobody has, you should go back and watch the lesson again and then take the test again until you score 100%.